الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين. And welcome again, my dear respected brothers and sisters, my dear beloved viewers, to another one of our programs entitled Lessons in the Month of Ramadan. So far, we have started to deal with different topics, uh, you know, during the course of uh, these sessions, and we have deal, uh, we have dealt with uh, some of the virtues of the blessed month of Ramadan. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has emphasized and encouraged upon, uh, you know, the practicing of good deeds to a great extent in this blessed month of Ramadan. And, you know, and he has encouraged us in many different ways to reap the benefits of this blessed month and to gain the maximum rewards that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is given in this month of Ramadan. And while emphasizing on that point, on one occasion he said, فَإِنَّ الشَّقِيَّ مَنْ حَرُمَ فِيهِ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ Certainly, this month of Ramadan is so blessed, it is so great that every believer and every Muslim should try his or her best to get the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given in this month. And in that, uh, you know, I mean, with respect to that, he said, فَإِنَّ الشَّقِيَ For certainly, the most unfortunate person is he who is deprived of the blessings of this month. He who is deprived of the mercy of Allah in this month is the most unfortunate person. In other words, the Prophet ﷺ was indicating to the fact that this month is so great and it is so blessed that every Muslim who hears about it, they will go towards uh, getting the blessings and they will go towards working very hard and they will go towards trying to do as much good as possible so that they can gain the maximum amount of blessings and they will gain the maximum amount of rewards that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in this month. They will do the fast, they will do the tarawih, they will recite Quran, they will make the dhikr of Allah, they will engage themselves in dua, they will speak that which is good, they will do that which is good, they will give charity, they will refrain from committing sins in the month of Ramadan and in this manner, they will be gaining a tremendous amount of blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if a person does not do these things, and he does not fast, and he does not uh, perform the taraweeh salat, and he does not recite the holy Quran, and doesn't do any one of the other good deeds, then that person will be such that the whole month has come to him and the month had stayed with him and the month had left him and he remained in his same old position. And he would have remained or he is remaining in that same position where he has not achieved any reward, he has not achieved any blessing, he has, achieved not, he has not achieved any goodness from the blessed month of Ramadan. Such a person, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he is the most unfortunate person. He is the most unfortunate person. And obviously we as Muslims, we will not like to be uh, termed unfortunate people. So therefore we should try our best. And the blessings that Allah has placed in the month, it's our job now to try to get it. You know, Allah has done the greatest favor to place these great blessings in the month. It is there for us. It is as if it is resting there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed it there. And he has asked us by saying, O oh servants, it is right there. You go forward and take it. Go forward and get it. So if we have such a very great thing in front of us, and yet we do not pay attention to, to what is there of the blessings and greatness and virtues and rewards from Allah, you know, and the rahmah and the mercy and the love coming from Allah and the compassion coming from Allah. If we do not go towards it and we allow it to remain there and we stay away from getting it, then indeed we will be unfortunate people. And we don't want to be unfortunate people. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, while encouraging us, to go towards it. Ramadan is there. Go towards the fast. Observe the fast. Go to the masjid. Go for tarawih salat. Perform your acts of ibadat. You know, recite your Quran. When you do all these things, you will be going towards achieving the blessing. 
You will be going again and again, going and taking something, going and taking something. And this is what we are encouraged to do. But if we do not do that, then what will happen is that we will lose out and we will become unfortunate people. And may Allah protect us and save us from that. The Prophet wasallam also, you know, in another beautiful tradition, while highlighting the month itself and what the month of Ramadan is about, he says, he said that, this month of Ramadan, it is Shahru Sabri. It is a month of patience. What did he say? He said, this month of Ramadan is a month of patience. And then he said, Wasabru thawabuhu al jannat. He said, and as for patience, the rewards for patience, it is Jannah. The reward for patience is paradise. That is what the Prophet ﷺ said. And when we really look at the month itself and what we are required to do in the month and uh, the sacrifices that are present in the month for us to do, we will realize that indeed the month of Ramadan is a month that a lot of patience is needed. A lot of patience, a lot of forbearance is needed in this month of Ramadan. This is why the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the month of Ramadan, it is indeed a month of patience. It is a month that requires you to have a lot of patience, to, to show a lot of patience and conduct yourself as if you are patient and you are forbearing. He says, but however, you should not think that you are putting in so much of patience. You are trying to be so forbearing, you know, and it, you, you, you feel it at times, you know, in, in, in one way sometimes you want to react at a situation, but you can't because of the fact that you need to have patience. The Prophet ﷺ told us in the hadith, do not think that this patience that you are having, which is a very, very great virtue, it will go unnoticed by Allah. He says, no, that patience that you are having in this month, this patience will take you to paradise because the thawab and the blessings for patience is nothing else but paradise. So much so that the Holy Quran itself says, as for the patient ones on the day of judgment, they will be given their rewards in full. They will be given their rewards in full. Nothing will be held back from them. But with respect to patience, it is important for us to know that we are required to have patience in different ways. And because of this, there are three different types of patience, different types of patience that the scholars have referred to and indicated to and have sp spoken about. The first type of patience is that patience that is known as a sabro fishai, patience in something. It means that patience in something, that you are doing something and in the doing of it and in continuing to do it, you need a lot of patience. For example, uh, we are required to, in order to observe fast, the fast in, in the month of Ramadan, we are required to make a lot of effort and sacrifice in order that we fulfill this commandment from Allah and by extension in order for us to fulfill the haq and the rights that this month has over us, we need to really exert ourselves and we need to make a lot of effort. For example, it might be our normal habit to get up around for Fajr Salat around 5 o'clock, quarter to 5 as the case may be. That might be our normal habit. Sometimes people may get late at that but before sunrise and perform their Fajr Salat. This is a normal thing. It might be normal also for people to go, uh, go to sleep early at night. But when this month of Ramadan comes in, in order to observe the fast, then we have to get up earlier. We have to get up earlier. Now, when we get up earlier, uh, we have to ensure that we take our early morning breakfast or the sahri before a certain time comes in. And that certain time that we have to stop eating at actually happens to be a time far before the actual time that we get up every morning. That's one. Then, after Fajr, many people go out to work. So, it's not like they get up early, but they make up 
uh, for that sleep immediately after the Fajr Salah. Many people prepare to go to work and they go out to work and they work for the entire day. They are feeling sleepy, they are feeling tired, but still they observe the fast and do what they are required to do on a daily basis. Then too, after become, you know, I mean, working for the entire day, they have to come back at home. After breaking the fast, they have to organize themselves, as we say, and go for the Tarawih Salat. They go to sleep a little bit late. Now, this, if it happens on, on, uh, for one day or two days, then a person probably can, you know, I mean, he can bear with that. But just imagine for 29 long days or 30 long days, a person has to go through the same thing. Now it begins to take a toll on him. Not that fasting is taking a toll on him, not that fasting is difficult, but because he's a human being, the fact that he's getting up early, the fact that he's not getting sufficient rest during the day, and the fact that he continues to work during the day, and that work is such that before the month of Ramadan, he would have eaten before he goes to work, that person taking breakfast, then midday he will take lunch, and then in the evening he will take dinner, you know, and during the course of the day, he, the day a person will be drinking uh, water or eating something, eating a snack, and, and you know, I mean, uh, doing these things have him with his energy and he's moving about and he doesn't feel, you know, feel that, uh, you know, um, he's becoming weak or so. But now every single day doing the same thing, but now on an empty stomach. I mean, he eats early in the morning, but he stops eating quite before half past four. Right, and he begins to go out for the job and go out to work eight o'clock, nine o'clock, as the case may be. So, I'm just using this to show you that because we are human beings, it's only natural that we will begin to feel tired, we will begin to feel, you know, I mean, feel the, 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 the pangs of hunger and thirst at times. So, as we were saying, when a person continues to go through the day's fast and also after the day's fast, he continues to go through a period of standing before Allah, approximately one hour and a half, that is Isha and Tarawih Salat. It does take some, you know, effect on the body. But a person now has to, to go through this thing for a period of 29 or 30 days. Obviously, it, it, it affects him in some way, but he knows it is an act of ibadat. He knows it is an act of worship. He knows it is something he has to do. So even though we see that even though a person is tired, he still uh, fulfills what he must do. Even though uh, an individual becomes hungry or thirsty, we will find that that person continues to fulfill the hours of fast until the correct time of, bre of breaking the fast comes, uh, comes up in the evening. Now, my dear respected brothers and my dear sisters, this takes, this takes a lot of sabr and a lot of patience. But this sort of patience is, is the one that is known as a sabr of ishai, patience in doing something that is good. So here is a situation where it is a good act he's doing. This is a very wonderful act of ibadat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this act of ibadat called fasting and all that goes with it, like the getting up for tahajjud salah in the morning, like the spending extra time in the night and performing tarawih salat and finding time, although a person may be tired, finding time to recite the Quran. This is, this is something that, that, you know, I mean, a person uh, may be affected by it because of the fact that, uh, as I said, he's just human, he or she is just human, and, and it would take an effect on the body. But yet with all of the, the so-called or seemingly difficulties that are there, the person continues one day after another day after another day. And we see, subhanAllah, we see that especially in, 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 in young children growing up who are now fasting for the first time, or who have fasted one year and this is second year, you will find that, you know, uh, they love the fast so much that although they are hungry and the parents, because they are now being trained to fast, fast who are uh, under the age of puberty the parents are telling them that you know son you, you can break the fast now daughter you can break the fast now alhamdulillah it's a training but yet you see that they are hungry you see that they are affected um, but yet they they are not ready to break the fast and it happens across the board as i said you know with people grown up adults also and also 
elderly people. They, they want to keep the fast. They, they keep the fast, although, you know, sometimes a, a doctor says to a person, you, 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 you cannot keep the fast and you should not keep the fast. But some people, they love this thing so much that they want to do it. But yet, yes, it affects the human body. It affects the, the, the person, you know, not eating and not drinking. So, so therefore, uh, it is not, as I said, that the, the thing itself is bad. Na'uzubillah, it is, subhanAllah, as I said a while ago, it is one of the greatest act of worship and ibadat, which is most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rewards that Allah gives for the fasting cannot even be counted. It cannot even be counted. The rewards that that are given for other other things to the servants the angels uh, bring that rewards and 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 are sent by allah but the rewards of fasting they are so much they are so great that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself he says in the hadith he himself gives the reward directly and uh, you know i mean it cannot even be counted it is so great in the sight of allah but in order to do this, a person needs sabr and a person needs patience. Yani patience in the doing the things that are very, very rewarding. So therefore, just like this, you know, throughout the whole year, he is required, that individual, the Muslim also is required to have a lot of patience in many different things. So here is a practical example of having patience in the ta'at in obedience to Allah. This is the month of fasting, this is the month of Ramadan, and he must continue, you know, to be steadfast and consistent in what he, he, he has done in the past and what he continues to do. He has to be consistent in that. So a person will fast today, tomorrow he's required to fast, the other day, and not only one week, it goes on to the second week, and not only the second week, it goes on to the third week, and then the fourth week, fourth week, and all the while the person is keeping up with the pace, and he is just having that patience in doing the things that he's required to do. So too we find that when people go for Hajj, probably the traveling, uh, might be exciting for some people and going to see the, the Holy Kaaba and visiting the Masjid al-Nabawi in Medina, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Mosque, etc. It's exciting. But when you get into the rituals of the, the, the ibadah, ibadah and the worship that is known as the Hajj or the pilgrimage, here is where you need a lot of sabr and a lot of patience. Subhanallah. You really, really need a lot of sabr. But Although it may be difficult at times, and for some people it may be even more difficult, the movements, the trying to make tawaf, the um, being at Muzdalifa, spending the night as Muz at Muzdalifa, uh, reaching from Mina to Arafah, reaching by bus or by foot, you know, and uh, then after that, you know, uh, going back to throw the pebbles at the Jamarat. Uh, for those who have performed the Hajj already, we, we know very well that, that it takes a lot of sacrifice, subhanAllah. It is something that is greatly rewarding. It is something that is really, really enjoyable to do because it is an act of ibadat. It is something that when a person does, he feels, he feels that sense of fulfillment that he has really accomplished something for the sake of Allah. But yet, you know, uh, generally speaking, it would take a little bit of struggle, it will take a little bit of sacrifice, and it will take a great effort and self-determination. The person cannot afford to give up. It is five days of Hajj, but it's five days of a lot of sacrifice which is done only for the sake of Allah. So here is a situation where a person wants to perform the Hajj. He hears so much about, uh, you know, the virtues of Hajj. He wants to go there, do the Hajj and come back sinless. But it takes, it takes something to receive that reward from Allah. So when a person enters and he goes for the first day at Mina, you know, and he starts to, let's say, um, encounter certain difficulties um, that he that is normally there that everybody will have to encounter now he needs what determination and he needs that sabr you know so de determination is a, another meaning and another translation for the word sabr especially in these cases where you need that sabr but sabr here means you need to be determined you need to be determined 
as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, himself says, this determination is from among the great affairs. If a person is not determined, then he may not be able to do a lot of good deeds and he will not be able to be obedient to Allah in each and everything that he has been command, you know, commanded to do. Because if determination, if a person lacks determination, then although there might be a big intention to do it, but when confronted with difficult situation, a person may draw back. And in this way, if every time he shows that lack of determination, then he will always be holding back. So in the same case with Ramadan, if a person does not have that firm determination to go and go again and be sober and has that sabr, then he will pull, pull back, he will hold back, he will say, you know what, this fasting is not really working for me, and he will pull back and hold back a little bit. But when you have determination, you're going to go all out in order to do what you are required to do. So too in the Hajj, in the pilgrimage, a person needs a lot of determination. It needs a lot of determination, let's say, in going forward and, and doing it. The first day of Hajj passes. Next day, with that big crowd and with the difficulty he had encountered on the first day, he hears that, well, he has to move through again to another place and you have the crowd moving there again. Now, he goes there, you know, and after that, he has to move to another place, Arafah, and then Muzdalifah. And from Muzdalifah, he comes back at Mina. And there is a huge crowd there that is waiting to throw the pebbles, just as he will be waiting to to throw the pebbles. So subhanAllah, you know, if a person doesn't have that sabr, that patience, as we will call determination, then it's very difficult. So the first type, as we said, this the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this month of Ramadan is a month of patience. And the reward of for patience is paradise. And so we see really that in this month, one type of sabr is very, very clear that we need to have. In other words, it is there and we need the sabr and patience. Inshallah, we'll continue discussing this topic of sabr uh, in tomorrow's program, but we'll close there. And I do hope and pray, inshallah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, will bless you for your fast and he will accept all your good deeds. With this, um, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.